everyone, and welcome back to the Vast and Ominous Comic Vault. I am Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. And we are going to chat about the sixth volume now of Ultimate Spider-Man. This is Venom. Venom. <laughs> and uh, a, a, of course, very different origin for the character and kind of a complete overhaul of Eddie Brock from what they are in 616. And uh, makes Venom a uh, science project gone wrong as opposed to a uh, alien from another planet. Yep. Uh, and makes uh, Peter and Eddie uh, childhood best friends. And makes Venom the thing that Peter's dad was doing. Yes. Um, I think this is the worst one we've read so far. I think it's not the best one we've read so far. Uh, so, when I read this in a vacuum years ago, um, it was a very large vacuum. It was probably the one that you were stuck in that one time. Uh, when I when I read this in a vacuum uh, um, all those years ago, uh, having not read very much Ultimate Spider-Man at all, I loved it. Um, reading it in in succession with the rest of this, uh, the scenes are showing, and you I'm, can tell Bendis doesn't want to be doing it. I think, and I'm yeah. Part of that is because of all of the weird technical mistakes, like. And, and I don't want to make a big deal out of this because there's only a few of them, but I never noticed them at all before this, hardly. And uh, he's sloppy in this. He's making well, like, some of it's not him. Like 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 the drawings not him, and the paint and the, the dialogue balloon placement isn't him. No, no, that's not him. But uh, there are a couple of, uh, of of just like writing errors. There's a and big then, error. and then there's a continuity error. But I mean, like he makes like th there are a couple places where he, he accidentally repeats words, and like I I don't know, it's just real sloppy. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, comparatively, you know, but uh, the the big thing that I noticed this time around it felt is, rushed. It felt rushed. The big thing I noticed this time around is the pattern of uh, all of Bendis's genetically engineered villains are the same. Mm -hmm. He kind of addresses that though, but a little in, bit, not in a great way. Where he's like, they're all the same, and like yeah. that's what Peter's frustrated about. Yeah, and I get that, but it makes. It makes Eddie Brock... So here's, here's what's weird. This Eddie Brock is five times more interesting than the one of the comics because he's an actual character. And I sort of kind of get where he's where he came from. I like that... And we've all met this Eddie Brock. I like that he's really deceptive where when you first meet him he seems like a really cool guy and then it turns out that he really is just kind of like Eddie Brock. Um, well, what I think is interesting in reading you know, like, it is I feel like as an older person... Like Gwen can tell he's just shady and wrong... I, I feel like reading this as an older person versus when I read it when I was younger. I can tell almost immediately. Like, there are a lot of red flags, like, instantly, where I'm like, oh, this is not a good... But, like, I see why Peter thinks he's cool. Like, I can almost see, like, the layers of it. Yeah. Where it's like, I get why, as a teenager, this is cool, and you seem cool, because you're, you're in college, well, and you've got all this stuff going on, and... Yeah, and, and you up, seem like you've got it all figured out. And to take out for myself a little bit, I'm I'm reading this from Peter's perspective, so I'm duped along with him. Mm. If that makes any sense. Um, well, the big thing so I like, remember because because initially I I'm not thinking that he is as as you know scummy as he is until you get to that scene where he tries to take advantage of Gwen. Well, and that's the that's when I think of Ultimate. He seems cocky. He doesn't seem like like perfect or great or anything. When I think of Ultimate Eddie Brock. The scene I think of is him repeating to Gwen as a, as a pickup line, and uh, what he said to Peter about like 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 right now nothing's gonna matter, and Gwen stepping back and being like, "I'm 15, dude." Which, by the way, yeah, the art does not help that scene because I don't remember it in the scene. They look the same age. She does not look like a kid. Um, no, but she is always drawn like that. But I think they all are. Like I think if Mary Jane was, if, if Mary Jane was put there, she d also doesn't feel no, they, they much older than the they kid. They both look pretty mature. But I, I, I will say, I was already thinking that in that scene, just because I'm thinking more story than art. I sure. guess. Like, because uh, because like they keep making, they keep hammering that he's in college. Yeah, they're just making a big deal out of how much older. But I'm not thinking they are. how young they are. Like I, I was. But, okay. Yeah, okay. Sure. Um, but, like, that's the scene I think of when I think of Ultimate Rock. So that's why, through this whole story, I'm thinking of that. I'm like, okay, oh, yeah, he's a well, ball from, from, from... I haven't from read Go. this in six or seven Because I remember and... it as a reveal. And, I, and I'm like, oh, no, the scenes are all there. It doesn't It doesn't come out of nowhere. It doesn't come out of nowhere. But, um, but like, if you're really with Peter... Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I can see why yeah. you wouldn't notice it. I didn't notice it until yeah. we got there. Um, so, let me go back to the statement I started a minute yes. ago. So, um, Eddie Brock is five times more interesting here than he is in 616. 
Venom is five times less interesting than he is in 6.6. And, and um, I'm also not sure Eddie Brock could ever be interesting again. Like, what they do with him, he has to... Next time you see me, has to be a completely different character. Because you can't do this again. But once the symbiote... If you can call it a symbiote, even in in, in this in this case, I mean they, they call they call it a suit. I like that. Mm. Um, once it takes over Eddie Brock, it really feels like Green Goblin again. Uh, like, like the it, I have the same problem with that, and, and I realize that he's saying like like well, it's all coming from kind of the same place, and um, like these these villains are all kind of the same, but it's still not interesting. So I'm bugged by it. Mm. Um, like I don't know. Uh, and we don't make a story point out of this. We don't make it interesting. I don't know where one begins and one ends, really. Like, I like like is it? It reads like a straight up possession, even mm. though it isn't exactly that. Well, but, and there's this weird thing because the the venom that Eddie has is not the suit that Peter wears. Yeah, exactly. So how does it know that it needs Spider Man? Uh DNA. DNA. But how does it know? It's never, it's never, it's never merged with Spider-Man. It doesn't know that it needs it, it. it unless Eddie knows that, and that's the symbiotic. That was the thing. assumption I made was okay. that be, because uh, it's it's made to bond with Peter's DNA specifically because it was his, his father's. That's a plot point. Mm -hmm. um, so oh, if I it can I, read his mind. I guess Eddie does know that. Eddie okay. knows that. Okay, I, in that scene, for some reason, Eddie's I was the as reason the Peter knows that. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, oh, okay, I was thinking of it as the symbiote was kind of in total control, but I guess it's not. It kind of goes back and forth. Okay. But he ends up just being kind of a big rage monster at the end. That's a problem Bendis has. Yeah. Bendis, a lot of villains just become m monsters. And we don't do any identity stuff. There's not the Wii stuff. There's not, you know, there's none of that. And maybe they do it later, I don't know. But I, I don't Bendis know doesn't like Venom, so, like, I don't think he's even thinking to do that. Yeah. Like, he thinks it's all dumb and we should get rid of it. Uh, did you read the, the behind-the-scenes stuff in this? Uh, you know story? what? I did not get around okay. to it. Okay. So there's a thing in this that I'm shocked that they printed, which is a back-and-forth between Bendis and Bill Jemis, which, um... I can't even begin to explain Bill Jemis to people that are not initiated. Um, I would recommend <laughs> going to watch... Uh, the, uh, the videos that SF Debris did on the history of, of, of Marvel in the 90s. Uh, near the end there, when Bill Jemis shows up, you will get a sense of how crazy and out there Bill Jemis is. Uh, Bill Jemis, Bill Jemis' idea, by the way, for, for Venom, is that uh, it comes from the webbing. Peter tries to make his webbing... What? His idea is that Peter tries to make his webbing strong enough to be a suit that's more durable, and it comes to life. That makes no sense. No, no. Now, I do agree... What would make it go sentient? Peter messed it up. No, it's bad. It's bad. That's really bad. And and he also there would be no reason for him to do the kind of genetic engineering that would take well anyway. And he also wants Eddie Brock to be also a webmaster at the Bugle who's better than Peter. Um, and and Bendis is like, no, that doesn't work. Like like we should do these things. And so like Bendis pitches pitches what he wants with the book, and it's this story. He pitches this story, and Bill Jemis goes, what you're doing here is unnatural. There's a really easy way you can make this make this work better. And he just pitches his story again where he goes, make it the webbing, not the not not the suit. I do agree. He does suggest that uh cure for cancer is weird. That I didn't have as much this read, but I've always thought that felt too real world. Kind I don't know how to explain really? that. Yeah. I don't know why. I just don't know how you get to suit from cancer. It's always felt like a little bit of a leap for me. I, I get how the suit works, but I don't know. I guess the problem with it is that you you have to like alter yourself too much. So would people really want to do that? Where it's like, I mean, I mean, I mean, I guess, I uh, you know, I, I guess you'll wear uh, like a cast or whatever you need to wear for as long as you have to wear it. But like. You know this thing that completely has to cover you. Yeah, and I also don't understand how it's like. Phase one is it fixes cancer. Phase two is it gives you superpowers. Because they say we're going into phase two now. I was like, how do you get from there? And that's why they weaponize it. I don't know how you get from cures cancer to enhances strength and vision and. Well, maybe they just found out that that was a side effect, and so, and, and, and so like they were, I don't know. Yeah, they were like, and I don't know how it shoots webs forced to go for you. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to me. No, it really doesn't. And so that's the one bit of criticism I'm like, that's fair. Um, there's a reason I brought it. But, but, but if you look at the background material, Bendis, 
flat out says, I don't want to do Venom. I don't like him. He's done. Wow. Um, he is forced to do he this story. He agrees with Sam Raimi. Yes, he does. So, so that means it must have been a mandate from editorial. It is absolutely a mandate from editorial to do Venom. Um, so, there's that. Um, I feel like there's another reason I brought this up, but I can't, I can't remember this. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, to be fair, when Eddie first becomes Venom, at least we've got some internal monologue and we can kind of see what he's what he's thinking. Yeah. But then once he gets back from Peter's perspective, he just feels like a big monster, and it's hard to fully even appreciate his motivations at that point. And it feels like we're kind of like running through things. Like, we don't... I, I mean, I guess it is... I, I guess at that point it is more the suit controlling him where he's trying to get Peter because he needs him to survive, I guess. But there's still a lot of talk about... Um, how angry Eddie is at, at Peter for doing this to him, and I don't, I don't completely see how he leaps to that. Oh, I do. Okay, go ahead. So Peter comes in and intervenes with his life, like because because Eddie's also read this a few days ago. Because Eddie's all set. He's got he's got special treatment with Doctor Connors. They're working on this project together, and this is going to be what's going to like like he's set for life. Yeah. Like yeah, he's yeah. he's going to finish this thing their dad started. Peter comes in out of nowhere, steals it, yeah. and then comes back and says, we have to destroy this. His entire college career is built around this thing. Once Peter takes that away, he has nothing. But he has nowhere to go. His entire life is, is broken. That's my problem. He doesn't take it away. Well, because he, he got tries to, but he has another one. What, like, he, yeah. he, at the end, it's like this big revenge thing of, like, you ruined my life. And it's like, no, I didn't. You, that's why you like went back to this and wound up as Venom. Like, yeah, I guess you're right. I guess that doesn't At that point, sense. you ruined no, right, your own right. life. Yeah, yeah, no, you're, yeah. How is Peter responsible for any of that? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't really know why Eddie is so angry with him. Yeah, I also think it's interesting how different his his roommate plays the first time you see him and the first and the second time. Uh, especially, because, well, let me say this real quick. Yeah. Especially because, um, like Peter shouldn't have stolen that. But uh, and and I think it's interesting that, uh, by the way, that there's this whole. Motif. There's this whole idea here about like um, doing the wrong thing impulsively because you're trying to be responsible and you overcompensate. So like that a lot. Where like he's got to find that midpoint where it's like when do you take a breath and try there's a to real folly of youth thing. Going yeah, on. You, I really, you got I really like. You got to make a plan first. You can't just rush in. You know? That's that, that's one of the things I, I've talked about this in the other volumes. One of the things I really like about Ben's Ultimate Spider-Man is Ben is always usually where he's writing a teenager. Yeah. Um, a lot of teenager books, especially at Marvel right now. Don't know they're right. Like these, are, these characters are fully formed and 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 they're right. Ultimate Peter makes mistakes. Yeah. Because he's a kid and he doesn't he doesn't fully get it. Yeah, and even from like the it, this isn't the same thing as character aggression. Like you can learn, um, you can learn something and grow from it and still make a mistake because you learned it. Like he's trying not to. Uh, do the thing that he did that got Uncle Ben killed, and he can overcompensate and go too far with that. Well, and he's also in a heightened emotional state because because this is all connected to his parents and like. And also, what just happened with Mary Jane? Yeah, he's affecting him. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. He's not he's not fully thinking right. Yeah, absolutely. And that's and, and, and that's the kind of thing that Stanley did all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what I was gonna say is, uh, this should be like good. I wonder if this is interesting. I I wonder if this is what Dennis was thinking when he did this. So, um. He, when Peter steals the suit and then uh, it takes him over and turns him into a monster in places and he fully develops the Venom head before Eddie Brock does. Um, he doesn't say brains though and that was disappointing. <laughs> I don't like how truncated this is but I don't mean, it feels like, I don't mean to be a purist but it's difficult for, for me to be okay with uh, doing the, the black suit saga in like six minutes. I like... Well, okay, so, he, so here's the... Cause, I'll get back to my point. The, Go ahead. This is our, so, You're fine. Because I, I was also going to mention I'm this. I'm interrupting this myself. This feels like it's running through all this material. But at the same time, in this story, it doesn't gradually become Venom. It immediately becomes Venom. So yep. Peter has no reason to keep keep it. And then when Eddie Brock puts it on, he also immediately becomes Venom. Yeah. Um, so like, it makes yeah, sense so in the it's story. It's not wrong or nothing. It's just I, I like... I like the slow burn uh, with the black suit of. I mean, in the comics, it's a really slow burn. But I, but but I, but I like the slow burn of. Um, um, like like I think I can control this and I'm fine. And then oh, it's altering my mind, but I don't realize it. In mm -hmm. in this, it's just oh my god, I turned into a monster head. I gotta get this off. Yeah. Um, 
I want your blood. He says blood, not brains. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, I don't like that. He's not a vampire. No. But anyway, uh, when when Peter uh, steals the the suit and then uh, proves that it is not remotely ready for human trials, uh, that should be a good thing to Eddie and save his career. So I'm wondering if, and this isn't really in the book, but I wonder if Bendis initially was thinking that uh, it's it's kind of like um, like Eddie Brock at the Bugle, where it's like uh, where, where it's like yeah, I was doing like a bad thing, and like and like with this, he he wouldn't have realized it was bad yet. But it's like if only Peter hadn't said something to anybody. Then you know I I could have gotten away with my plagiarism my plagiarism or whatever mm. it was like in this you know um, maybe I could have gotten away with uh, you know working on this experiment that would get people killed but it's not really in the book so no I don't know but I kept trying to find parallels to the original Eddie Brock story and there aren't a lot I don't think there are because Benz does not like him yeah he doesn't like I don't think he went back to that Venom this, stuff this is like, not a reinvention of it's overhaul. Like it's, yeah, it starts over because he doesn't. He doesn't think it works. Um, Except that Eddie Brock is a bad person from the beginning, who's just pretending to be a good yes, person. Yes. Yes. Um, so I have a whole thing. There's a whole sequence here. Oh, and I should also mention the the good thing about that though is that it is like a Peter Parker who was raised without an Uncle Ben. Like, yes. In, in, yes. In Aunt May. Like like he is he is Peter's opposite in that way, which is nice because all their parents die at the same time. Mm hmm. Yeah, or allegedly no, that makes they sense. do. I don't know if his parents were actually alive in this version, but so okay. I have to break down why this why this this sequence of events does not make sense. <laughs> Speed Parker discovers Venom. Right, it's bad. He wants it. He wants it off. Uh, did you spend a lot of time looking at this and who was here and who wasn't here? Because I did. I did. Uh, there's someone who I feel like is remiss, but I can't remember who. Um, so then he jumps, falls on power lines. Yeah, I wish we had page numbers. Power lines electrocute him. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're like one page before me. So turn to the next page. No, I know. I'm just oh, looking yeah. at this page for a second. I'm trying to see if, if I can find the person that might be missing. Let's see. Is the lizard there? The lizard's not there. And i got to talk about the lizard later. Because oh, Daredevil is there. The Daredevil's there. Yeah. Yeah? I forgot Daredevil was in this. He's not. You have, we haven't seen him yet. Well, then why is Daredevil there? I will explain that when we get to the last issue. Okay, all right. Because uh, i got issues with the last issue. Has, has Spider-Man already shown up in somebody else's book? Is that... There is a we're book. already talking about Ultimates and stuff, so... There's a book written by Bendis called Ultimate Team-Up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a couple issues of that. Yeah, so Daredevil shows up there, I think. Also, the only appearance of Ultimate Lizard is an Ultimate Team-Up. So I was reading this last issue. You thought I missed something. my brain and go, I thought maybe I forgot. It, because I was like, did this open with the Lizard story? I'm pretty sure it didn't. Nope. We've never seen him. We've never seen him. That only happens all the time. You know what happened to that story? Spider-Man fights the lizard. It's a regular lizard story. And then out of nowhere in the last, like, four pages, Man-Thing walks in, turns him back into normal lizard, and then leaves. That's and turns him back into Connors? Yeah. Or? Oh. Sorry, turns the lizard back into Connors and then leaves. What? Yeah. Yeah. That's the only canonical appearance of Ultimate Lizard. So, this is not me speaking to the quality of that story, but just for the sake of this not being confusing, should it have been in these trades? Yes. Okay. Somewhere. Yeah. It's, it's the only one. I mean, I guess Daredevil being there is weird. Like, that's not a plot point. We flash back to a story you haven't read if you're reading the trades. And they don't give you an asterisk or anything. Nope. That's a place where they should have done that. Yep. Weird! Okay, so, Piers running, running on rooftops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I have to follow along in my well, textbook. You are on the page. I have to, I have to follow along in my textbook. Oh, sorry. I just went through. Uh... Okay, so he falls on power lines, and that took me like three reads to figure out what was happening. I'm like, is he getting hit with missiles? Where's what's happening? <laughs> so he falls on power lines. Oh, you're right. I, it is hard to tell what's going on yeah. here. So he falls on power. Honestly, I tend to just skip over things like that. Honestly, I, I didn't notice. In, or I didn't realize what, I didn't actually know what was happening until right now when I was looking at this page to explain why this page doesn't make sense. He falls on power lines. Um, they falls off of the power lines into a cemetery that in, right in front of the grave for. Follow me here. His mom, his dad, and Uncle Ben. Uh -huh. They're all on the same tombstone. 
His parents would have been made years before Uncle Ben died, and there's no extra space for, for Aunt May or him or... Why would it look like that? No, that's really stupid. Yup. Also... Okay, so are we told definitively they found the bodies? Because this, this, according to this, cannot be a version where they're still alive. No, it's a plane crash. It's a plane crash in a normal plane full of people. So, I think we know... But it definitely it. actually happens? I think so. Well, unless it, in, unless there's a conspiracy, but I mean, like, they're, they are not... They, they did not put a headstone here and not have bodies there, because it says here lies. Like, there, there are bodies I'm there. not going to answer that question, because I know things that happen later. Um, is it retcon? I'm not going to tell you one way or the other. Okay. I'm not going to tell you whether they're alive one or the other. But okay. there, is a thing, uh, there is a thing with that. Well, l but let me just ask And it you is something. implied here that... That it, that it is a conspiracy. It is implied. That's why I said that. So is it possible... So I guess what I'm asking you is, without you giving anything away, do, do you think that this ultimately ends up being wrong? Or um, just this headstone? I mean, I, I don't know or if here lies is supposed to be that specific. Can, no, it is. If you say here lies, that means that, that you, yeah. you buried a, yeah. a casket. Yeah. You never write that... I don't know. I, I don't know about the bodies. I know that we play with the conspiracy with his parents. And also, you wouldn't have... And I don't remember exactly a, having, how we deal with that. Ha having worked in a, in a funeral home, like, I, I, I mean, to be fair, like, we, I never saw a service for someone where we didn't find a body. But, um, if, you know, because I don't, because I don't, I, don't, I don't live in a soap opera, but, um, I don't know if... You weren't bearing, like, CIA agents. Yeah, yeah. In a case like that, I don't think you'd have a headstone. I don't know. I mean, you you'd have you could have a a, a uh, what am I trying to say? A monument, but it wouldn't be like a headstone. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you maybe you maybe put a headstone there for when you find the body, but anyway, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But but this headstone's weird, they're, right? They don't have dates either, which is strange. Yep. Yeah. But like, they made it just for also Uncle Ben, but not Aunt May. She's they carved it back they on just later. No, she'll never die. Like so. So for like a she decade, this is a no lopsided way. headstone. Where like there's just nothing here. Everything about that is really weird. Okay, so what I'm gonna tell you about his parents is we are we are in issue 38 at the end of this trade. Uh, we will deal with some of these questions in issue 100. Oh, good. So it'll be a ways. Um, good to know. I want to talk about the final issue with Fury. Yes. Okay. So this issue is important because. So I start reading Ultimate Spider-Man. And very quickly, I get a subscription to Ultimate Spider-Man. This is the first issue of Ultimate Spider-Man I ever read, like, off the rack. I got it in the mail. Okay. Uh, so, I read the first trade, and I think the Goblin trade? And, like, I missed stuff in between, but, like, I think, like, those are the only two trades I read. And then, this Fury issue. Um, <laughs> so, it's just, it's important to me. Yeah, uh, sure. Like, for no other reason, it's important to me. Um, also, important to me. The next arc is my least favorite arc in all of Ultimate Spider-Man for oh. very personal reasons. Interesting. Um, we w it's probably not as bad as I think it is, but we'll we'll talk about that so next time. So we're between these two trades in, in not a great place for you. Yeah. Um, we're well, we at the low point right now. But I don't now? remember disliking Venom as much as I did reading it this time. Where I was like, this doesn't really work. I didn't love it. It really feels like Bendis didn't want to write this story. Yeah. It really feels that way. And, like, after reading this stuff, like, I know Bendis didn't want to do that, but, like, reading it feels like... But, like, it shows you how much talent he has because he still makes Eddie Brock, like, an actual character. And, and the stuff with Peter's dad on the tape is good and no, doesn't I feel like anywhere that. near as sappy as Iron Man 2. And I actually don't mind the idea of his parents uh, making the symbiote and this being a big brief. Like, it's weird, because he makes this really important, but he doesn't want to write it. You'd think it would be like a throwaway story. He makes it the culmination of everything that we, with, with the mad science that we've had since, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Oh, Because that means that, like, the goblin science and everything starts from Venom, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, no, no. No? No, it all starts with the Super Soldier. Because wasn't Oh, okay, of course. Everything in the universe is, is an attempt to create a super soldier in some way, shape, or form. Okay, but that would mean that Venom is is, is another step in that line, right? Cause I don't think it's supposed to. Like, it's not supposed to be. Is it not? Okay. I don't think, it, I don't think it's... Okay, but so... We, but we talk about, like, oh, and then there's... And, and, then, and then there was, there was Doc Ock, and, or, or is it just that he keeps fighting, like, 
genetically engineered psychopath. Yeah, it's that genetically engineered, about? yeah that's, it's just genetically engineered psychopath. Nope. It's not that it literally all comes from the same place, it's that it... And here's the thing, when I'm reading this, and you, you guys have to forgive me, especially people that are really familiar with this stuff, but different versions start to run together that's for fair. me, um, because a lot of things get, look, go back and look at this and, and change things, so like, I couldn't, I can't remember, like, if Osborne is involved, like, with the parents. He's not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I also want to make uh, uh, a couple minor continuity notes about things that will get retconned later, but I don't think are, are, are definitely aren't intended here. So, Fury talks about working at, uh, was it McDonald's? At Burger King. Burger King. Fury, Fury, and you say that's not possible. Fury works at Burger King, and he also says 10 years ago he was in college. Fury exists in World War II. According to Ultimate Origins, Fury, Fury exists in World War II. But you can... Uh, you can potentially write off anything he says that doesn't count as a lie. Yep, and so, just try to make Peter feel better and things like that. Yeah. Uh, also, I'm pretty sure we retcon later that Peter's dad worked with Fury on a try trying to, to make the Super Soldier Serum, but I don't remember where that comes from. I looked it up on Wikipedia. He definitely did, but I don't know where it comes from. It might also be Ultimate Origins. But that's but also I hate that retcon. That's also a lie I really buy mm. that he's pretending like he never knew Peter's parents. But I like I like it better if he didn't. But no, also, I do too. I do but too. also, I understand. One of the big things with Spider-Man for me that I take it's issue with... It's possible that almost everything he says at the end of this is a lie in some way or another. Well, and and it also makes his speech to Peter make more sense if he is intentionally lying to Peter. Like, that's not what I said. Yeah, we need to talk about that. Yeah. Um, but so people know what we're talking about. Stanley establishes in, like, Annual 4 that's, that Peter's parents are S.H.I.E.L.D. agents and that's never sat right with me. But I can't say it's inherent... Like, to me... Peter's parents working with Nick Fury goes against what Spider-Man... Like, his parents aren't important. But, but Stan Lee made his parents S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, and I can't reconcile that in my brain. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so 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 Fury shows up and and re-quotes himself in the end of Green Goblin, where he said that I own you. He, he edits himself. Like, that was one of the most ominous things in the book. And he he treats Peter like he just heard him wrong, and like he was, he was blowing things out of proportion because he's a stupid teenager. Which also feels like an adult. Um, yeah. I well, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like no, I know better than you. I'm older than you. I think that scene works. Only Neither of us had a tape recorder. Uh, we can't go back to this comic and read it because we're in it. It's either the only way it's, for me it doesn't work is, it, is if is if it's a mistake and Bendis uh, messed up and he forgot. But to me, it works if he's lying to him and trying to make him feel better and be like, "That's not what I said." But I also think it works. If he personally realizes that he went too far last time and is yeah. self-editing, I suppose so. I think both of those takes were. The problem is the way it reads, and I—I I mean, it probably know, doesn't help after reading that whole arc where there's a bunch of mistakes. That's true. Yeah, well, I'm not trusting it. But also, we also haven't mentioned the Ame thing, and we, we need to talk about that. But I read it like, and I—I I, I might, I might be. Just, just wrong about this, or it's ambiguous. So, like, I'm not saying this is exactly what it is, but on, on on I say first read. I've read this before, but it read like one of those things where it's not just the character talking. Mm -hmm. It read like Bendis saying that to you, the reader, mm -hmm. that like Peter uh, has been has been all all worried about this, and he wasn't right about it, and because it, because it felt like I was supposed to think it was really ominous the first time around. But it actually wasn't as ominous as I thought it was because we don't want Bendis to be, or we don't want um, Fury to be like a scary nightmare. Mm -hmm. I think it's Fury lying so that he's not a scary nightmare to Peter, because that certainly tracks with, with 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 him in the Ultimates, right? Like everything we know about Nick Fury in the Ultimate Universe is he is not a good person, and I, my interpretation of what is happening there is that he is just flat lying to Peter. Yeah. Um. So it's just it's just like manipulation. Mm -hmm. Or I guess it could also be that he's like I, I maybe I went too far and I want him to and I want him to have a better because what he says uh, if you haven't read this in a while or, or you haven't read this um, what he says the the, the first time is uh, like a couple trades ago is uh, be a kid because eventually I uh, when you turn because 18 of, because of your of your powers you're going to be a shield agent I'm going to own you and what he says here is. Um, no, you heard I own you, but I didn't actually say that. What I said was, you'll get to be a superhero, and yeah. you'll get to be like Captain yeah. America. Who wouldn't want to grow up to be to, 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 to be on the Ultimates and work with Captain America? Yeah. Yeah. It's basically what he says. Like, but that's going to be your whole life, so... Don't worry about it right don't now. Don't worry about it right now, yeah. Um, so there are 
weird, easy mistakes. Yeah. Through this book. Uh, so the big one for me, and I, I, I mentioned to you where I was like, I'm, I'm bragging about this, right? Like, this doesn't make sense. So this whole story arc opens, not oh, like old uh, Amazing Spider-Man. I double-checked with the wiki just to make sure that somehow or rather the, the parentage wasn't different. Yeah. But, yeah. So, um, like, 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 like in Amazing Spider-Man 2 or 1, he, Peter's just like downstairs like finds some of his parents' old stuff. And he finds his tape. Of, of them all together, he's watching the tape, and, and Aunt May comes down. I was reminded of that scene, too, yeah. Yeah, right? Like, I, there's a lot of this in the Amazing oh, Spider-Man. Of course, man. yeah. Um, part of the reason I like them. Um, like them. Um, so, <laughs> the... Uh, He'll never watch them again, but... No, I'll go back. I was actually thinking about going, going, going back to, to, to at least the first one. The first one, yeah. I like the second one more than anybody else that's playing it. Yeah. Um, but, uh... I've never seen For something. For me, it just feels like it's just this unfinished thing where it just feels so irrelevant. It's hard to go back and look at. And I'm not one of those people that's like, well, now that we're at the, the next thing, it doesn't matter anymore. It's just it's unfinished. Like it's so much of two is just building with yeah. yeah. So it's just yeah. hard to care. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so Aunt May comes in and gets kind of emotional, and she says, "Seeing your father's things and my sister's things," which makes no sense because yeah. Uncle Ben and Peter, Peter's dad, uh, need to Richard Ray, um, have to be have to be have to be brothers because his last name is Parker. His last name is Parker, and both of their last names are Parker. And we know that I don't know if it's officially con uh, uh, confirmed in Ultimate, but at least in in, in six one six, we know her last name is Riley. Riley. She has a different last name. If if Peter's mom is her sister, that means they both married men with the last name Parker? <laughs> this is a amazing. Or they're also brothers. Well, and for a second, and then it immediately broke down. For, for a second. I gotta tell you this. Um, I was trying to make it work, and I thought, okay, they were hippies. Yeah. Maybe uh, they tried to be, like, super progressive, and he took her name? But it still wouldn't work. No, because Peter's dad's last name is still Parker. Yeah. Yeah. Because his, his dad's last name is still Parker. And the only way that works is that if they're <laughs> also hippies, even though they're much younger, and uh -huh. also do the same thing. Because that's his that's her sister now. Yes. Yes. You see how it's weird? Yeah. Now we're just complaining that about... That just seems like a weird flub. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say is, like, he clearly just slipped up, but how do you make that mistake when you're... How does an editor not like, catch that? Yeah, especially. At the very least. But, like, I don't know, I don't know how... I don't know, I'm trying to think of, of, of an equivalent thing, but, like, you know, imagine... Um, imagine making that mistake with, like, a major Batman character, like... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was there any other major mistakes? And he also calls his dad Ray, which Wikipedia says his name is Richard Ray Parker. That's probably just because of that, though. Unless I've, it comes up again. I've never heard Ray is short for Richard. It's short for Raymond, as far as I'm aware. It. I think he's thinking Ray Parker Jr. and makes a mistake. That's really funny. Um, no, I was trying to think of like a Batman equivalent thing. This would be more glaring, but I guess it would be it would be like if Alfred like said that, uh, that that like Thomas Wayne was his brother or something. He's like, we know that that's not the case. Like, it would be so weird if you... If or you like something. when your mother brought me in. Yeah. Which I guess isn't, doesn't change that much, but like it's always just been his father. But like that's not, even that's not his. Yeah. Yeah. It would um, be really weird if you made that mistake. Um, the big thing I noticed, or this isn't even a big thing, but, but okay, a minor thing I noticed, but I thought it was funny, so I want to share, is there is, and I told you about this, there is a panel um, where... The where where uh, Venom, you know Eddie Brock Venom, because uh, I guess they both technically end up as sort of Venom for a minute, um, and actually Peter more so because he has the whole full on uh, suit. Because um, and this is actually the point I'm going to make. Uh, Eddie Brock doesn't have the spider, except in one panel for no good reason, um, where Spider Man uh, has that immediately. Because he's Spider Man and it just mm -hmm. shows up. Doesn't look as good. Like, I know Bagley drew. Well, I guess Bagley never, never drew Black Suit Spider. I don't like Ultimate Black Suit Spider. Something about it looks wrong. I don't know what it is. I, it's some, some of its coloration, I think. I don't like the purple. Yeah, something about it just looks wrong to me. It's weird. Anyways, or, or, it's or, my or, or is it. 
Is it black when Spider Man's wearing it and purple when Eddie wears it? No, well, I think it's, it's kind of purplish when Spider Man's wearing it's, it too. It's purple. Well, well, that's 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 that weird recolored scene. I know, but it's still purple. Yeah. Um, it's it's still purple. But something about it's the purple way, on the covers, dude. Something about the way it looks on Spider Man because Ultimate Spider Man is drawn differently than regular Spider Man. Yeah, it doesn't look good when he's all lank because like he's drawn more like teenager when he's in costume. Like he's kind of like like gangly, lanky black costume is weird. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't look good. It doesn't yeah. look good. But anyway, so what I was gonna say is, uh, Peter's got the whole kit and caboodle, but when Eddie Brock is Venom, uh, he doesn't have the symbol, which makes sense because it's a different symbiote. Remember that point mm -hmm. and. It hasn't been in Peter's head. Mm. So it shouldn't, like, spin webs or anything. Like, it shouldn't mm. do anything spider-like. There's no reason it would do that. It's weird that both of them make the exact same head because the eyes are based on the Spider-Man suit. Mm -hmm. so I don't know why they would do that. That's mm -hmm. weird. I don't care about the teeth and the tongue, but it's weird the eyes would look the same. And then uh, and, and then there's one panel. It's, it's, real, it's real small uh, where you see... The uh, you see the spider, but nowhere else on that on Venom. Venom. Yeah, and there's no reason he would no that that's ever have that. It's just a mistake. Yeah. So anyway, um, I also just real quick want to mention. Uh, so I'll find it and show it to the camera here real quick. So there's certain things, certain like images and scenes and things in Ultimate Spider-Man that like when I was younger like really hit me. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like probably like dumb like teenager kind of things, but, like, I remember thinking that, like, these kinds of scenes were really powerful. This... This feels really powerful to me as, as like, a 16-year-old. Well, I'd be even younger. I'd be, like, 13. Yeah. This, like, thi like just sad Peter Parker. On, on the roof by himself. But then also this. I think I just like Peter Parker in, like, a jacket and, like, looking sad, because, <laughs> like, these are the kinds of things, like, I think of when I think of Ultimate Peter and, like... So here's that panel. He's got it nowhere else... But then, right down here, Venom's got the spider. Can I see what page that is? I just want to see if it was somehow corrected in the hardcover. It's that almost wordless page. Yeah, let, let, me, let me real quick On the right see side. To it. Oh, how do you feel about him coming to Peter's uh, school? Yep, so, uh, yep, it's here. I thought it was weird that Peter talked about it to himself like he'd never fought somebody at the school before. Yeah. Because that happened the first time he fought anyone. He was yeah. like, oh, now I'm fighting uh, monsters or, you know, villains at school. I'm like, well, you've done that before. I also like the moodiness of it, uh, where, like, it's raining and, like, he's just in his... No, I like it, too. Oh, once again, he's just sad in the jacket, and I, that really, that really speaks to me. Um, no, I mean, I guess, like, it always kind of ups the intensity, because, you know, he's, he's at a, he's at, like, a more, I don't know, like, vulnerable place, and it's because, like, Venom knows who he is and mm -hmm. all of that. But so, yeah. so not the best art. It's not great, and I gave it a much better review several years ago. Try and remember. When I didn't know nothing. Try and remember the, the, the or try and try and not remember that I said that the, the next arc might be my least favorite arc in the entire run. Because I don't know if it's actually bad. I will explain. You don't want that to cloud my read. Yeah, because I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying I hate it for when I read it. Um, yeah. So sure. we'll. We'll, we'll talk about that next time. But, like, don't go and try and find the seams. I'm not actually sure. I'm not actually convinced it's bad. But I can't read it and like it. Like, I've, I've reread it before. I can't read it's it just, and like it. This is not your... It's just... Not what you want. Kind of, yeah. I just... I can't get over something from when I was, like, 14. Okay. Maybe, well, maybe I will this time. Maybe I will this time. I'm interested to see what that's like. Yeah. Uh, we're going to move on now and do a little bit more Spider-Man. Uh, we've got a lot of Spider-Man on the show today. Uh, you talked about the video game movie. earlier. And yeah, lots of Spider-Man. Uh, so we're going to cover the first arc of Spencer Spider-Man uh, a little bit on the next um, edition of The Vault. Uh, we, we've been finding ourselves doing like three Vault videos uh, in Omnibus lately, which means you get one every week, so that's cool. Yeah. Uh, but so next up, uh, we're going to do Spencer Spider Man, and then uh, Eric's got a few uh, quick things to run through, yep. and I have like one or two very quick things to run through. So in uh, the meantime, uh, thanks a lot for watching. If you just clicked on this video, and if you are watching the playlist, just keep it running, and you'll get more Comic Vault. I am Captain Logan. I'm Eric. And see you again soon.